Do double blind tests work? This question comes from Norman in Oklahoma. Hey Paul, I enjoy your videos very much. Thank you, Norman. Have you ever done double blind auditions of high end components? Y yeah, uh, rarely. I, the, let me think, when, the first time I ever did one was using an ABX box. And this was, oh, 30 years ago in somewhat of a controlled experiment. They, at one of the shows, <clears throat> one of the companies had a, uh, what they call an ABX box. And there was a lot of controversy surrounding this thing. And I don't even remember what we were trying to test for, but it was what they called a double blind, where you had a button and you could hear A, B, or X and you didn't know which was what. So the testing people didn't know, you didn't know, and um, there were a whole bunch of things wrong with that. I, I actually successfully identified, I'm gonna say a majority of the time, whatever it is we were trying to identify. I and several other listeners did pretty well on that ABX test, but others uh, didn't do so well. And that part of that has to do with the, um, the level of experience as a listener that one might have. But there was more, more wrong than that. There are several problems. First off, and, and I know this is going to be contentious to a whole bunch of people, the way that those tests are done using these relay switching systems th that are... Um, sort of degrading to the sound, or they can be degrading to the sound, depending on how they're done, that's a little bit problematic. Not, not something that can't be overcome, but typically wasn't. Secondly, the level of uh, resolution in the speaker system, at least in the one test that I was in, was pretty grim. They just had a standard pair of speakers. I don't even remember what they were. I think they were Snells. And Snells were okay speakers. I wouldn't call them highly resolving speakers. And un unknown, undisclosed electronics. It wasn't, it wasn't the greatest sounding system I'd ever heard. And it certainly wasn't set up properly for imaging, for spatial cues, and the things that I am more sensitive to than perhaps others who are more sensitive to tonal balance. But, so yeah, I have, I did okay in that test. I don't think it really demonstrated what the uh, folks were trying to demonstrate. I know the guys at the Boston Audio Society over years past have done a lot of ABX testing. <clears throat> Here's why I'm not a big fan of ABX testing or double blind testing. So much of what we hear is perceptual audio and a lot of it depends on our moods. Not all of it, but a lot of it depends on our moods. And if we're not in the right mood, if we're not in the right frame of mind, we're not going to hear what somebody else who's in a better frame of mind might pick up on. And I, I, I'll, I'll give you some examples. If you, oh boy, what, what are some good analogies? Food, I usually go back to food. I can taste a lot better if I'm in the right mood to taste a certain kind of food, uh, depending on my level of hunger, depending on my general mood and the, you know, if, if for instance, for example, if, if I am on, uh, what's the right word, public display, if, 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 I, if there's pressure on me, I, I clam up. I, I don't do well at all. If I have an audience and I'm being judged by that audience, my brain kind of just turns off. It, I do much better when I'm not in a test. I, I've seen it all my life. If I'm, if I'm being tested, I, I don't do well. Left to my own devices, in my own space, and in my own time, I can come down to some very repeatable conclusions, while other people are probably just the opposite. When they are being 
scrutinized. They're, they're at their sharpest, you know. So we're all different. And it's very subjective uh, towards our moods to how we perceive things around us. So my answer to that is the best kind of testing that works for me is blind A-B testing. So that is where we just take out the X factor. And I'm in a situation where I am comfortable. So in music room one, for instance, I'm comfortable and I will usually have somebody help me to do it. And I want to hear A, <clears throat> then I want to hear B. And I want to go back to A, uh, a little bit more, oh, let me go back to B. It's important that I don't know what A or B are. That's really important. It's also important that they be completely gain matched. Whatever we're doing has to be at the identical volume level. But mentally, if I can say, play A, play B, play A, play B to my heart's content, and then finally I'm going to say, you know what, B is better. I can be almost entirely consistent, even if later you bring me back in and you swap them, and I don't know that you did that, and you say, now try A and try B, I always, always, there's no always, I usually get the correct piece of equipment if the differences are big enough. So for me, A-B testing, blind A-B testing is the way to go. Double blind ABX testing for any number of reasons does not, for me, work very well. And I'm only interested in learning the truth, and I don't really care who agrees with me or who doesn't. So there you are. All right. Thanks for the question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.